I started streaming about two years ago now. I want to say June of 2018. And in those two years, I have learned a lot about streaming. And I know there's a lot of creators, they make these videos, these, you know, things I wish I would have known videos. I know they make these. But what I want to do with this video is I wanted to kind of share with you a couple things that I wish I would have known uh, from a smaller creator standpoint. You know, a lot of these bigger streamers, they make these videos and, you know, a lot of that stuff is outdated. It's, it doesn't, you know, Twitch doesn't work the same anymore. It's just how it is. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with this video uh, from a smaller creator standpoint, hoping to provide value to anybody who's starting their stream. So with that, these are the five things I wish I would have known before I started streaming. Get into it. All right, the first thing I wish I would have known before I started streaming is that um, gear isn't all that important. I've talked about gear a couple times on this channel, and the thing that always comes back to me about gear is that it's good to have, but it's not the most important thing. When I first started my stream, I wanted to start out with really good quality and awesome equipment, and so I invested a lot into a decent setup, a good setup. And you know, I've been told I have the production value of a top streamer, and even though I do have that, um, I, I don't have the audience to really show for it. And so gear, it's not the most important thing. Don't get me wrong, it helps. It helps to make the stream look better and run smoother. So it's good to have like a baseline of like minimum requirements, right? but you don't wanna make gear the reason that you don't start creating in the first place. I've had a lot of people I know and even viewers that come into my channel that have said, oh man, I'd love to start streaming and I'll start streaming as soon as I get this. Or as soon as I upgrade blank, I'm going to start streaming. And that's all good and great, but the base requirements for streaming aren't as high anymore. Software like OBS and Streamlabs OBS have actually made it so easy for people to stream now and they've lowered the minimum specs to try and make it so that anybody and everybody can stream. And it's okay if your stream is not like super top tier quality. Just look at a guy like XQC. XQC is probably still using the base webcam, the C920 that every streamer uses. It, you know, it's good quality, but you know, a streamer his size, I mean, you'd think he would be using, you know, better cameras, he'd have overlays, but he, he doesn't have any of that. His production value really has pretty much stayed the same. And that kind of shows that gear does not equate to viewership. And that's a that's kind of a good thing to, uh, to keep in mind. So gear is important. It's good to have, but don't let it keep you from starting. All right, thing I wish I would've known before I started streaming, number two. When you first start, you may gain some momentum, but eventually that's gonna kind of flatten out and you're gonna, you're gonna plateau a little bit. When I first started streaming, this streaming community found me and adopted me into their community. And we, it was streamers supporting streamers. It was really cool. Everybody rated each other. It was, it was awesome. Because of that community, I was actually able to get affiliate within a month. It's pretty quick. But the community shortly disbanded after that. And when that happened, I was not getting as many followers per day, wasn't getting as many viewers per day or unique viewers, wasn't getting as many people in chat as I'm really used to. You know, it's like I gained this momentum at first and then it just kind of flattened the line and it almost kind of dipped down too. So if you're kind of plateauing, that's okay. It happens to everybody. I've talked with streamers at TwitchCon and even they say, yeah, I plateaued, it happens. So if the numbers aren't, you know, as high as they normally are, that is normal, that is okay. And uh, there are some ways to get you out of that plateau. And that's a great transition into the third thing I wish I would have known before I started streaming. You're gonna have to create content on other platforms. Now we all know that Twitch has a discoverability issue. There is no sort of, you know, algorithm to m manipulate and abuse to kind of get you higher up on, you know, the category list or to get you in front of more people. That's just not, you just don't have that. And so that's why it's insanely important to be able to create content on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok, to be able to diversify your content and to get your content in front of more people. You know, even recently, I've had a couple people who came into my chat because they found my YouTube channel. That is exciting. Now keep in mind, I'm no social media expert. I'm still kind of growing my audience, still growing my following, and so I'm not an expert. What I'm saying here, and, and not just here, but this list entirely is just based off of my experience. So take that with a grain of salt. And I've had more people who have found me through YouTube and Twitter rather than anybody who just randomly found me on Twitch. So it's really important to create content on other platforms. That way you can manipulate those algorithms and, and get yourself an audience on those platforms that you can then bring over to Twitch. And this is gonna take some time, it's not easy. And Twitch will figure out this sole discoverability thing. They will, hopefully. 
But until then, we have to get a little bit creative with putting content on other platforms and bringing them on over to Twitch. So that's kind of the idea. And I know what you're about to say, Jaren, I'm streaming. I don't have time to edit. I don't have time to create content on other platforms. And this is a great transition to the fourth thing I wish I would have known before I started streaming. Man, transitions are on point today. Please, please, I, I beg you, do not stream every day. <laughs> I used to stream Monday through Friday. I used to stream every day of the week. And when I first started streaming, I heard that, you know, there's, you just gotta grind out Twitch. You just gotta do it and stream a lot. And so I was like, okay. So I streamed every day of the week and for a few hours every day, I could make that work between school and work. I was able to make that, you know, fit in my schedule. But the whole problem with the Twitch grind is that it almost doesn't exist. And this kind of ties back into the previous point I made, you know, you're not gonna grow on Twitch if you're not diversifying your content on other platforms. I found myself sitting at the bottom of the category every day of every week. And it just, it was very discouraging. There was very little to no growth happening and it was really difficult to, to really be motivated to continue to stream. And when you're streaming so much, I mean, you're you're bound to get burnt out at some point. I mean, I don't know how these full-time streamers sometimes do it where they stream the same game every single day. I just don't know how they do it. But then I started streaming like, you know, three days a week and it was a lot better. I had more time to create these YouTube videos and I was actually able to, you know, really have fun on the days that I did stream. And I actually looked forward to streaming. So streaming every day, it sounds tempting, but based off of experience, it's, it's not gonna help you that much. It's been very helpful for me to take those couple days away from the stream and then put those days toward filming and editing and creating content for other platforms. All right, next we got the fifth thing that I wish I would have known before I started streaming. When I was at TwitchCon, I talked to a lot of streamers who said that you need to have a thing. And at the time, I kind of just sat there on stream playing video games. There was nothing to separate me from any other streamer on the platform. Nothing made me, you know, stand out amongst the rest. And so you kind of have to ask yourself, what is it that you do? What, are you, what is your thing? What do you bring to the table that's different? Now, a content creator that I've found that actually has a very, very clear you know, what he does and who he is. He has that figured out. That creator is Sam Woodhall. Sam is a graphic designer and motion graphics artist. And sure, Sam plays games on stream too, but a lot of the times he's designing things, he's designing overlays, logos, uh, reviewing people's designs, like, and he posts videos on his YouTube channel of how to design things, how to animate things. He posts tutorials and stuff like that that really are helpful for anybody who wants to make their own overlays and designs. And Sam has a very clear thing. He knows what it is that he does and he's very good at it. And what it is that you do and what it is you're about, that, this could take some time to figure out. It's taken Sam a better part of 10 years of graphic design experience to get to this point. And there's a couple different ways to figure out what it is you're about and what it is you do. The first option, you develop a skill that not many people have, but is highly desirable. And you spend a long time developing and developing and developing that skill to where you are one of the best to add it. And once you've gotten really good at that thing you do, whether it's, you know, whether it's graphic design, maybe it's music, or maybe it's leather making. I don't know. Once you've gotten really good at that thing that you do, then you make content around it and you share that value with other people. Now, the second way to figure out, you know, what you're about and what it is you do is make a list of things that you could probably talk about for hours. I mean, things that you could talk about for a long time. You and I were to sit down, have a drink, have a conversation. What would we talk about? Would we talk about Twitch? Would we talk about gaming? Would we talk about, I don't know, what, what would you want to talk about? And I don't care what it is they are. It could be Star Wars, like you could be totally into Star Wars, Harry Potter, whatever. That stuff's super cool and you could create content around that. Even if you're like, I don't know, super passionate about, I don't know, peanut butter. Literally the internet is the place where you could make $60,000 a year talking about peanut butter. But once you've gotten these things down on the list, pick two or three of them that you would like to really start out with and talk about and create content around. You know, if maybe Star Wars is on that list, you're creating videos reviewing the latest Star Wars The Clone War episodes. Those would be really cool. Or you're making a video about like what you would like to see in The Mandalorian season two. It's all about what you find interesting and what you're passionate about. Because if you are passionate about something, then people are gonna also be passionate about it and they'll find that interesting as well. You know, Peter McKinnon is a great example of this where he's a photographer, but sometimes he'll do videos associated with leather making. And I'm not super into leather making, but it's interesting. It's cool. So take some time with this. For some people, this will, you know, come to them really quickly. For some of them, it's gonna take some time. 
and you know that's actually a good note to end on is that you know it's 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 gonna take time this whole content creation thing it's it's not gonna happen overnight when I went to TwitchCon, you know, I was talking with Harris Heller uh, at his meet and greet and he said, you know, you're going to be reinventing yourself a couple times. And that is very true. You know, some things may not work. Some things might, but you got to give yourself time. You got to be patient. Just because one video didn't do well doesn't mean that the next one won't. You got to give it time. You got to be patient. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope some of you guys found this interesting, but thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate you. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And just as a friendly reminder, I am live on Twitch. So link to that in the description down below. Go leave me a follow. We greatly appreciate it. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, everybody.